Hi and welcome to the next video. Today we'll be looking at how to create a simple animation using still photos and After Effects and Adobe Photoshop. You can see here that there is a slight little bit of movement to this uh, skateboarding guy and you can see that things are just moving around slightly. Now it's very simple to do so let's follow a few simple techniques and get into Photoshop. So the first thing you need to do is you need to get the picture that you're going to create this um, little project with. Now I used uh, pexels.com and I was able to find um, a subject that I could relatively easily cut out and I went and downloaded that and opened it up in Photoshop. What we need to do is firstly we need to create a few duplicate layer copies. We're going to keep one as the original copy and we are going to have one as just the background and one as the skater or the person. <clears throat> so to duplicate layers you can press Control J on your keyboard if you want to know the shortcut. So the first thing we need to do is we need to actually cut out our little skater guy over here. So we're going to cut him out of the background. So making sure that we are on the background layer we are going to try and as close as possible without going into the actual um, subject we're just going to trace around him using the lasso tool now even if it's a little bit off we're going to be using content aware to try and fix this up but it's much easier if you try to get it as accurate as possible now there are going to be little bits and pieces that we will have to cut out later um, but for now let's just get the outline around the skater and then when you're done should get a selection like that so I'm just gonna press delete on my keyboard and now nothing's happened because if I take off my other two layers I can now see where I've deleted it so we actually want to fill that in so we are going to be using content aware so you can press shift F5 on your keyboard or you can go to edit uh, fill and then you can get to content aware just gonna press OK and slowly your computer will process that data and then it will give you what it thinks is a rebuilt version of that image so now I'm gonna deselect by pressing Control D to deselect and there are a few issues that we have in there so the easiest way to do this is to just keep on going back and pressing um, shift F5 or getting back into content aware or you can use the spot healing brush so there's also an outline around here so you have to be very very careful and you have to make sure that you get rid of any outlines before moving on to the After Effects stuff and for example, if you really want to get in there and do a little bit of spot healing, you can also do that too by grabbing the spot healing uh, tool. So the spot healing tool is in our tool section and you can find it over here. Now, if you want to change the, the hardness of it, maybe lower that to about 20%. And now you can start to, to get in here and start to clean up some of the, the mess that the content aware has made and you know what like if even if you want to chop out entire sections you can use content aware and even if it's not perfect you know it, it's all right just so it's not that noticeable so I've cut out the skater that's the original image so now we have to work on the actual skater layer so now what we have to do is we have to get rid of everything else and we just have to keep the skater so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna get the eraser tool and I'm just going to start with a pretty big brush and I'm just going to keep the hardness at 100% and just erase the edges. Now I can make the, um, the brush size bigger and smaller by pressing the square brackets keys on my keyboard. So I'm just going to go and erase, you know, pretty close to the actual skater. And then I'm going to fine tune that and try and get um, as much of that 
information of, from this uh, picture out. <clears throat> so once you've done that and you've gotten rid of you know a bit of stuff, you can go to the magic wand tool and you can highlight all of the you know uh, the parts of the picture that are the same and then you can just press delete and so that will get rid of most of it. This stuff down here you are going to have to use the eraser tool and you're going to have to get in there and actually fine tune all of that kind of stuff. So again you can press E to get back to the eraser tool and you can uh, start to remove some of this um, stuff in here. So you might have to zoom in and for stuff that's really close to the actual content you want to bring down the hardness to about maybe 20% and so this will just kind of uh, make it a, a little bit softer. So once you've taken most of it out then we need to we need to just double check and see if we haven't missed out on any bits so the easiest way to do this is we need to create a new layer we're going to put it underneath our skater and we're just going to fill it with a dark color so black is pretty good because everything stands out you can go back to your skater layer press e and then just kind of um, fix up any imperfections Now again, this doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but as long as you get a good idea of, uh, you, you don't want to have these little artifacts, you know, floating uh, in your After Effects project file. So try and get as many of those floating things as possible. And then when you're done, we can actually take it to After Effects. <clears throat> okay, so now we're done and Basically, we can save this and then we can start to import this into After Effects. So to save it, all we need to do is just go to File, Save, and then we will import that into After Effects. So here we are in After Effects and this is the 2019 version. Um, we're not going to start on a new composition just yet. We need to import our footage. So all we need to do is we can just go to Import or you can just drag your files in there. So I'm going to import my file in. And now when you get to this section, you really need to make sure that you change the import kind to composition and you make sure that you have editable layer styles so that each layer that was in the Photoshop document, you can actually use it inside of Adobe After Effects. So I'm going to click OK. And so now I've got my all of my three layers that I had down here. I've got my background, my person, and I also have the original layer. We only really need the background and the, the skater, so the person. So I'm just gonna rename this, so that's gonna be skater. You just press enter to rename, and that's going to be the background. Now, I don't really want my video to be in a uh, resolution like this so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to my composition settings and I'm going to change my composition settings to um, to 1920 by 1080 I don't really need 30 seconds so I'm just going to shorten it to about yeah, I think 10 seconds will be fine so I'm gonna click OK <clears throat> so now it looks a little bit crazy so what we have to do is we have to, and by the way, to zoom in and out, you hold Alt on your keyboard and scroll on your mouse. If you need to move around uh, the screen, you press the middle button on your mouse and uh, you can move it around. So firstly, I'm just gonna fix up the background a little bit. I'm going to make it a touch smaller. You don't wanna go in too far because then you will have black, uh, black bars on the sides of your um, uh, video. So just make it fit you know just nice and we're probably gonna uh, change it around later and then also for the skater we will also have to make him a little bit smaller always hold shift 
when uh, resizing these um, layers because otherwise it will be skewed out of proportion. So now I've got my skater, I've got my background and I'm ready to actually animate. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just um, put a few puppet points on uh, our skater over here and that will enable us to be able to move his arms and maybe his legs, things like that. So we're gonna make sure that we're on the skater layer we are going to go to our puppet position pin tool or you can press Control p on your keyboard command p if you're on mac and i'm just going to put a few puppet pins on different parts of his body so maybe one on the head one down here maybe one over there now you don't really need this many but you can just go back to using your selection tool and you can see what happens when you start to click on those things. So if you think it's a little bit better animation moving from the elbow, well then put the, the pin at the elbow. If, you know, this will give us a little bit of movement in there and I'm always undoing what I've just, what I just did because it's very easy to just, you know, go crazy there and then just leave it and now it looks pretty, pretty bad. So. What I'm going to do is, I'm just going to have a little bit of movement on his arms, okay? As well as a little bit of movement on maybe the back of the skateboard. And that's pretty much it. So, to animate these things, okay? What I need to do is, I need to press U on the keyboard. Once I press U, all of these, all of my puppet points are now selected. So, and already the, the stopwatch icon is on. The stopwatch icon means that animation will occur once you actually scrub through the timeline. So to start, I'm just going to move this hand down. And I'm gonna hold shift to keep it in a straight line. And I'm also going to move this hand up. So to do that, you need to find the starting point and we're gonna start at the first frame or zero seconds. As we move along to uh, 10 seconds in time, I'm going to move the arm back up, maybe to somewhere like that. And you can see here that it's created this keyframe. Now, when I scrub through, I can see that that is actually going to animate. Now, that might be a little bit excessive, so I wanna go back in there and I want to just maybe not do it as much. So I'm gonna just bring it down a little bit. So the starting position is there, the end position is there. Very subtle, not too much to do. Then I'm gonna work on this hand over here. So starting position, just gonna bring it down slightly and finishing position, gonna bring it back up to where it sort of was before. So now you can see that movement is already happening. And that's only two parts of uh, this, you know, the puppet pins that we've used. So maybe I wanna animate a little bit of the skateboard. Now I don't wanna animate that too much, so I'm just going to move it over slightly, just so it looks like the skateboard is flying and there is a little bit of movement. I might as well just add a touch of movement right here and this is gonna be very, very subtle. So I'm just gonna move that. In slightly. So now I have four things that are moving. I also wanna move the whole skater himself as well. So I'm gonna get out of my puppet settings and I'm gonna click on this little arrow over here and I'm going to look at my transform settings. Now I've got things like scale and position which I'm going to have a play around with. So position is quite cool because I can actually move the object, all right? So, and again, the same way to animate. You click on the position all right, you click on your first frame where you want the animation to start. So once I'm happy with the position, I can 
kick off the animation and then I can scrub through in time and I can move the skater to where I want him to end up. So again, very subtle. All right, there's not that much movement. And when I play back, I can see that, you know, things are happening. And whether or not it's a bit slow, I can, you know, fix that up a little bit later. So once you have all of that um, animating, the last little bit of animation is the scale. So you can make things, you know, go bigger and smaller. So, and this will give the illusion that, you know, you're either jumping into, um, you know, over this uh, little seat thing, or, you know, it, he's jumping away. So I'm just gonna make that bigger to start. All right, and then I'm going to move forward in time and then I'm gonna make it touch smaller so it's like he's jumping away so when I go and I scrub through that I can see that the hands are moving the skateboards moving the skater is moving and it's getting smaller as well so I'm pretty happy with the results so far for the skater. The last thing I want to do to just, you know, keep everything in movement is actually move the background as well. So perhaps, you know, maybe something like um, position or scale can be used here as well. So I'm going to go onto the background and I'm just going to go onto the scale. So I'm going to make that a little bit bigger to start. Press the stopwatch icon move to 10 seconds and then just make that a little bit smaller without going over and having any black bars in there so now everything is moving and it's all at the same time so now it really gives the illusion that this is a moving thing when all we have done is taken a still photo and you know did a bit of animating in after effects and and we have given it that movement so the final thing you have to do with this is, you know, I mean, if you want to add some text or anything like that, you can go and add, um, you know, wh whatever you like. And you can actually animate the text as well. There's whole, you know, things to do with uh, text animation. But you can save it and then you can export the file. So to export the file, we need to go to File, Export, Add to Media, Encode a Queue. It will now open up the media encoder queue and if you've done it correctly then you don't really have to change much of this we're going to click match the source um, which will mean that we are using our composition settings which is 1920 by 1080 resolution if not you can change your settings in here if you want we are going to be using the h.264 codec um, if you want you can use h.265 as well both will give you a nice uh, mp4 file and then this is your path so where you're going to save it um, to your computer and then when you're done you just have to click the start button to start the rendering process and once that's complete then you know you have your animation which will be saved as an mp4 file so anyways guys i hope you learned something today thanks for watching and i'll see you next time